Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Vertica BBC 2020. Today's breakout session is entitled Putting Complex Data Types to Work. I'm Jeff Healy. I lead Vertica Marketing. I'll be host for this breakout session. Joining me is Deepak Majetti, Technical Lead from Vertica Engineering. But before we begin, I encourage you to submit questions and comments during the virtual session. You don't have to wait. Just type your question or comment in the question box below the slides and click Submit. There will be a Q&A session at the end of the presentation. We'll answer as many questions as we're able to during that time. Any questions we don't address, we'll do our best to answer them offline. Alternatively, visit Vertica Forums at forum.vertica.com to post your questions there after the session. Our engineering team is planning to join the forums to keep the conversation going. And also, as a reminder, that you can maximize your screen by clicking the double arrow button in the lower right corner of the slides. And yes, this virtual session is being recorded and will be available to view on demand this week. We'll send you a notification as soon as it's ready. Now let's get started. Over to you, Deepak. Thanks, Jeff. I'm excited to talk about the complex data types work we have been doing at Vertica R&D. Uh, without further delay, let's see why and how we should put complex data types to work in your data analytics. So this is going to be the outline or overview of my talk today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about what are complex data types in some use cases. I will then uh, quickly cover some uh, file formats that support these complex data types. I will then deep dive into the current support for complex data types in Vertica. Finally, I'll conclude with some usage considerations and what is coming in our tenor release and our future roadmap and directions for this project. So what are complex data types? Complex data types are nested data structures composed of primitive types. Primitive types are nothing but your uh, int, float, and string, var, binary, et cetera, the basic types. Uh, some examples of complex data types include struct, also called row, uh, array, list, set, map, and union. Complex data types can also be built by composing other complex data types. Complex data types are very useful for handling sparse data. We have some examples on this presentation on that uh, use case, and also they help simplify analysis. So let's look at some examples of complex data types. So the first example on the left, you can see a simple customer, which is of type struct with two fields, namely na uh, field name of type string and field ID of type integer. Structs are nothing but a group of fields, and each field is a type of its own. The type can be primitive or another complex type. And on the right, we have some example data for this simple customer complex type. Uh, so it's basically two fields of type string and integer. So you, in this case, you have two rows uh, where the first row is Alex with uh, name, name Alex and ID 1001, and the second row has name Mary with ID 2002. The second complex type on the left is uh, phone numbers of type array. Uh, of, uh, the array has the element type string. So array is nothing but a collection of uh, elements. Uh, the elements could be, again, a primitive type or another complex type. So in this example, the collection is of type string, which is a primitive type. And on the right, you have some example of uh, this collection of, uh, of array type called phone numbers. And basically, each row has a, set or has a list or a collection of phone numbers. Uh, on the first row, you have two phone numbers. And on the second, you have a single phone number in that array. And the third type on the slide is the map data type. Map is nothing but a collection of key value pairs. So each element is actually a key value, and you have a collection of such elements. The key is usually a primitive type. However, the value is, uh, can be a primitive or a complex type. So in this example, the, both the key and value are of type string. And then if you look on the right uh, side of the slide, you have some sample data. Uh, here we have HTTP requests of, of where the key is the header uh, type and the value is the header value. So the, for instance, on, on the first row, we have a key type pragma with value no cache, key type host with value some uh, host name. And similarly, on the second row, you have some key value called accept with some text uh, HTML. Uh, because uh, yeah, they actually uh, have a collection of elements, arrays and maps are commonly called as collections uh, as a, uh, to, so in, so in many uh, documents. So uh, we saw examples of, uh, of a one-level complex type. So on this slide, we have nested uh, complex data types. So on the right, we have the, the root 
a complex type called web events of type struct. Struct has uh, four fields, uh, session ID of type integer, session duration of type uh, timestamp, and then the third and the fourth fields, uh, customer and HTTP requests, are uh, further complex types uh, themselves. So customer uh, is, again, a complex type of type struct with three fields where the first two fields, name, ID, are primitive types. However, the third field is another complex type, phone numbers, which we just saw uh, in the previous slide. Uh, similarly, HTTP request is also the same map type that we just saw. So in this example, each complex type is independent, and you can reuse a complex type inside other complex types. For example, you can build another type called orders and simply reuse the customer type. However, in a practical implementation, you have to deal with complexities uh, involving uh, security, ownership, and lifecycle dependencies. So keeping complex types as independent has that uh, advantage of reusing them. However, uh, the complication uh, with that is you have to deal with uh, security and ownership and lifecycle dependencies. Uh, so this is, on this slide, we have another uh, style of declaring a nested complex type. Uh, this is called uh, inline complex data type. So we have the same web driven struct uh, type. However, uh, if you look at the complex types, they're embedded into the parent type definition. So customer and HTTP request uh, definition is embedded inline into this parent structure. So the advantage of this is uh, you won't have to deal with the security and other lifecycle dependency issues, the, with the downside being you can't reuse them. So it's sort of a trade-off between the, these two. Uh, so, uh, so let's see now some use cases of these uh, complex types. So the first use case or the benefit with, of using complex data types is that you'll be able to express uh, analysis more naturally. Uh, complex data types simplify the expression of analysis logic, uh, thereby simplifying the data pipelines. In SQL, it feels as if you have tables inside a table. Uh, so let's look at an example uh, on, and, and say you want to list all the customers with more than 1,000 website events. So if you have complex types, you can simply create a table called web events and with one column of type uh, web events, which is a complex type. So we just saw web events. It has four fields, session, uh, customer, and uh, uh, HTTP request. So uh, you can basically have the entire uh, uh, schema uh, in one type. Uh, if you don't have complex types, you'll have to create four tables, uh, one essentially for each complex type, and then you have to uh, establish primary key, foreign key dependencies across these tables. Uh, now, uh, if you want to uh, achieve your goal of, uh, of uh, listing all the customers with more than 1,000 web requests, uh, if you have complex types, you can simply use the dot notation to extract the name, the contact, uh, and also use some uh, special functions for maps that will give you the count of all the HTTP requests greater than 1,000. However, if you don't have uh, complex types, you'll have to now join each table individually, uh, extract the result from a subquery, and again join it on the outer query, and finally you, have, you can apply a predicate of uh, total requests where, uh, which are greater than 1,000 to basically get your final result. So uh, it's, uh, complex types basically uh, simplify the query uh, writing path. Also, uh, the execution itself is also simplified. So uh, you don't have to have joins if you have complex types. You can simply have a load step to load the map type, and then you can apply the function on top of it directly. However, if you have separate tables, you have to join all these data and apply the filter step, and then finally another join to get your uh, results. All right. So the other uh, advantage of complex types is that you can process semi-structured data very efficiently. Uh, for example, if you have data from click streams or page views, the data is often sparse, and uh, maps are very well suited for uh, such data. So maps are semi-structured by nature, uh, and uh, with this support, you can now actually have semi-structured data represented along with structured columns in uh, in, 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 a, in any database. So. Uh, maps have this nice, nice feature to encap encapsulate sparse data. As an example, uh, the common fields of a clickstream click or page view data are pragma, host, and accept. Uh, if you don't have map types, you will have to end up creating a column for each of these uh, header or uh, field types 
However, if you have map, you can basically embed uh, as key value pairs for all the data. So on the left, here on this slide, you can see an example where you, if you have a separate column for each field, you end up with a lot of nulls, uh, basically it's sparse. However, if you can uh, embed them into, in a map, you can uh, put them into a single column and sort of uh, yeah, have a better efficiency uh, and better representation of sparse data. Imagine if you have thousands of fields uh, in a click stream or page view, you will have thousands of columns. You, you will need thousands of columns to represent the data if you don't have a map type. All right, so uh, given these are the uh, most commonly used complex data types, let's see what are the file formats that actually support these complex data types. So most uh, uh, file formats, popular ones, support complex data types. However, they have different uh, sort of variations. So for instance, if you have JSON, it supports arrays and objects, which are complex data types. However, uh, JSON data is schema-less, uh, it is row-oriented, and it is text-based. Uh, because it is schema-less, it has to store redundant keys on every row. The second type of uh, file format is Avro, uh, and Avro has records, enums, arrays, maps, unions, and a fixed type. However, Avro has a schema, it is row-oriented, and it is binary compressed. The third uh, category is basically the Parquet and ORC style of uh, file formats where they're columnar. So Parquet and ORC have support for arrays, maps, and structs. They have a schema. Uh, they are column-oriented, uh, unlike Avro, which is row-oriented, and they're also binary compressed, and they support uh, very uh, nice uh, compression and encoding uh, types. Uh, additionally, so the main difference between uh, Parquet and ORC is only in terms of how they uh, represent complex types. So Parquet includes the complex type hierarchy as representation definition levels. Uh, however, ORC uses a separate column at every uh, parent of the complex type to basically represent the nullness. So uh, that's, apart from that uh, difference in how they represent complex types, Parquet and ORC have similar capabilities in terms of optimizations and other uh, compression uh, techniques. Uh, so to summarize, uh, JSON has no schema, has no binary format, it is columnar, uh, sorry, it is not columnar. Avro has a schema, it has binary format, however, it is not columnar, and Parquet and Arc are, uh, have a schema, uh, have a binary format, and are uh, columnar. Uh, so let's see how we can query these different kinds of complex types and also uh, the different file formats that they can be present in and uh, uh, how we can basically query these uh, different variations in Vertica. So uh, in Vertica, we basically have uh, this uh, feature called flex tables uh, to uh, where you can load uh, complex data types and analyze them. So flex tables use a binary format called VMAP to store data as key value pairs. Flex tables are schemaless. Uh, they are weak typed. Uh, and they create flexibility for performance. So when I mean, when I, uh, what I mean by schema-less is basically the keys provide the field name and each row can potentially have different keys. And uh, it is weak type because there's no type information at the column level. Uh, we have some, we will see some examples of, of this weak type in the following slides. But basically there's no type information so the, so the data is stored in text format and uh, because of the weak type and schema-less uh, nature of flex tables, you can implement uh, some uh, optim uh, some uh, use cases. Like if you you can trivially implement uh, needs like schema evolution or keep the complex types types fluid. Uh, if that is your use case, then the weak typeness and schema less nature of flex tables will help you a lot uh, to get give you that flexibility. However, because uh, you have the, it is weak type, you you have a downside of not getting the best possible uh, performance. So if your, if your use case is to get the best possible performance, you can use a new uh, feature of the strongly typed complex types that we started to introduce in Vertica. So complex types here are basically a strongly typed complex types. They have a schema, uh, and then they give you the best possible performance because the optimizer now has enough information from the schema and the type to implement uh, optimization such as column selection or all the uh, nice uh, uh, techniques that uh, Vertica employs to give you the best possible column performance can now be uh, supported even for complex types. So, and we'll see 
some, some of the examples of these two types in these slides now. So let's use a simple data called restaurants or uh, restaurant data to as a running uh, ex like a, for for throughout this uh, following slide to, ex to basically see all the different variations of flex and complex type. So on this slide you have some sample data uh, with four fields and uh, essentially two rows uh, if you sort of uh, load it in if you if you separate them out. So uh, the four fields are name, uh, cuisine, locations, and menu. Name and cuisine are of type varchar. Uh, locations is essentially an array, and menu is an array of a row of two fields, item and price. So if, you, if the data is in JSON, uh, there is no schema and there is no type information. So how do we process that in Vertica? So in Vertica, you can simply create a flex table called restaurants. You can copy the restaurant.json uh, restaurant .json file uh, into Vertica, and basically you can now uh, start analyzing the data. So if you do a select star from restaurants, you'll see that all the data is actually in one column called raw. Uh, and it also, you have the other column called identity, which is to give you some unique uh, raw, raw ID. But uh, the raw column basically encapsulates all the uh, data that is in the restaurants.json file. Uh, this raw column is nothing but the VMAP format. Uh, the VMAP format is a binary format that encodes the data as key value pairs uh, and the raw format is basically backed by the long war binary column type in Vertica. So each key uh, essentially gives you the field name and the value is the field value. Uh, and uh, it's all in, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, however, the values are in the text, text representation. So uh, say now uh, you want to get better performance of this JSON data, Flex tables has this nice uh, functions to basically analyze your uh, data or try to extract some schema and type information from your uh, data. So if you execute compute flex table keys on the restaurants table, uh, you'll see a new table called public.restaurants underscore keys, and then that'll give you some information about your JSON data. So it was able to automatically infer that your data has four fields, namely cuisine name, cuisine locations, and menu, and could also guess that the name and cuisine are watch are. However, since locations and menu are complex types themselves, uh, one is array and one is array of a row, uh, it sort of uses the same VMAP format as is to uh, process them. So it has four columns, uh, two, prim two primitive of type watch are, and two are uh, VMAP uh, themselves. So now you can materialize uh, these uh, columns by uh, altering the table definitions and adding columns of that particular type it inferred. And then you can get better performance uh, you, from this materialized uh, columns. And uh, yeah, it's basically, it's not in a single column anymore. You have four columns for, the, for your restaurant data, and you can uh, get some column selection and other optimizations on, on the data that Vodica provides. All right, so that is, uh, uh, so your flex tables are basically helpful uh, if you don't have a schema and if you don't have any type information. However, uh, we saw earlier that some file formats like Parquet and Avro have schema and have some type information. So in those cases, um, you don't have to uh, do the first step of inferring the type. So you can directly create the type uh, external table definition of the types, and then you can uh, target it to the Parquet file, and you can load it in uh, via an external table uh, in Vertica. So the same restaurants uh, dot JSON, if you call, if you transfer it to a trans restaurants dot parquet format, uh, you can basically get the fields uh, with look, however, the locations in menu are still uh, in the VMAP format. All right. So uh, the VMAP format also allows you to uh, explode the data and it has some nice functions to uh, yeah, extract the fields from uh, VMAP format. So you have this map item. So the same restaurant data, if you want to explode and you want to apply predicates on the fields of the arrays and the arrays of row, uh, you can uh, have uh, map items to explode your data, and then you can apply predicates on a particular field in the complex type data. So on the slide, it's basically showing you how you can explode the entire data, the menu items, as well as the locations uh, and uh, basically give you the elements of each of these complex types uh, up. So uh, as I mentioned, 
the menus, so if you go back to the previous slide, uh, the locations and menu items are still in the var binary or the VMAP format. Uh, so the question is, if you want, what if you want to get perform better on the VMAP uh, data? So uh, for primitive types, you could materialize into the primitive style. However, if it's an array, an array of row, uh, we will need some first class complex type constructs, and that is what we will see that uh, are added in Vertica now. So Vertica uh, has uh, started to introduce complex data types uh, where uh, each complex type is sort of a strongly typed complex type. So on this slide, we have an example of a row uh, complex type uh, where, uh, so we create an external table called customers, and you have a row type of with two fields, name and ID. So the complex type is basically inlined into the uh, table, into the column definition. And on the second example, you can see uh, the create external table items, which is a nested uh, row type. So it has an item uh, of type row, which itself has two fields, name, and the properties is again another nested row type with two fields, quantity and label. So uh, these are basically strongly typed uh, complex types, and then uh, the optimizer can now give you a better performance compared to the VMAP uh, using this strongly typed information uh, in, in, in your queries. So uh, we have uh, support for uh, pure rows and extra rows in external tables for Parquet. Uh, we have support for arrays and uh, nested arrays as well for external tables in Parquet. So you can declare an external table called contacts uh, with, a, with phone number uh, of uh, array of integers. Similarly, you can have a uh, nested array of uh, items of type integer. Uh, we can declare a column with that strongly typed complex type. So the other uh, complex type support that we are adding in the Tenor release is support for optimized one-dimensional arrays and sets uh, for both ROS and as well as Parquet external tables. So you can create uh, internal table called phone numbers with a one dimensional array. So here you have phone numbers of, of array of type int. Uh, you can have a one dimensional, uh, you can have sets as well, which are also one, sort of one dimensional arrays, but sets are basically uh, optimized for fast lookups. They, are, they have unique elements and they are ordered. So, so you can get uh, fast lookups using sets. If that is a use case, then uh, sets will give you very quick lookups for elements. And we also implemented some functions to support uh, arrays, sets uh, as well. So you have apply min, apply max, which are uh, scalars that you can apply on top of an array element, and you can get the minimum element and so on. So you can up, you have support for these additional functions as well. So the other uh, feature that is coming in Teno is the explode arrays. Uh, functionality. So we have a, implemented a UDX that will allow you to, similar, similar to the example you saw in the map items case, you can extract elements from these arrays and you can apply different uh, predicates or analysis on the elements. So for example, if you have this restaurant table um, with uh, the column name, watchar, uh, locations, of which is an array of watchar and the menu, again, an array of watchar, uh, you can insert uh, values using the array constructor into these uh, columns. So here we are inserting three values, uh, Lily's Pizza with, uh, location, with locations Cambridge, Pittsburgh, uh, menu items, cheese and pepperoni. Uh, again, uh, another uh, row with uh, name, uh, restaurant name, Bob's Tacos, um, location Houston and Tortilla Salsa and Taj Mahal in the third example. Uh, so now you can basically explode uh, the both arrays uh, into and extract the elements out from these arrays. So you can explode uh, the location array and extract the location elements, which is which are basically Houston, Cambridge, Pittsburgh, New Jersey, and also you can explode the menu items and extract individual elements. And now you can sort of uh, apply uh, other predicates on the exploded uh, data. All right, so. So, so let's see uh, what are some uh, usage considerations of these uh, complex data types. So uh, complex data types, as we saw earlier, uh, are nice if you have sparse data. So if your uh, data has click stream or 
uh, has some uh, page view data, then maps are very nice to have uh, to represent your data. And then uh, you can uh, sort of uh, efficiently represent uh, the, in, in a space-wise fashion for uh, sparse data using map types. And complex data types, uh, as we saw earlier, for the web request count query, uh, it will help you simplify the analysis as well. Uh, you don't have to have joins, and it will simplify your uh, query analysis. Uh, uh, as I just mentioned, if your uh, use cases are for fast lookups, uh, then you can use a set type. So arrays are nice, but they have the ordering on, on them. Uh, however, if your primary use case to just uh, look up for certain elements, then you can use the set uh, type. Also, uh, you can use the VMAP or the flex functionality that we have in Vertica uh, if you want flexibility in your complex type data type uh, schema. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, you can trivially implement uh, needs like schema evolution or even keep the complex types fluid. So if you have multiple uh, iterations of your data analysis and each iteration you are changing the field because you're just exploring the data, uh, then VMAP and Flex will give you that nice ease to uh, change the fields within the complex type or across files and we can load uh, fluid we can load complex data types with, with fluid fields, basically different fields in different row uh, into VMAP and Flex tables uh, easily. However, if you're, uh, once you basically treated over your data, you figured out what are the fields and the complex type that you really need, you can use the strongly typed complex data types that we started to introduce uh, in Vertica. So you can use the array type, the struct type, and the map type for your data analysis. So that's sort of the high-level uh, use cases uh, for complex types in Vertica. So it depends on a lot on uh, where your data analysis phase is. Uh, if you're early, then your data is usually uh, still fluid, and you might want to use VMAPs and Flex to explore it. Uh, once you finalize your schema, so you can use the strongly typed complex data types and, uh, to get the best possible performance. All right. So, so what's uh, coming in the, the following releases of Vertica. So in Teno, uh, which is coming in some time now, uh, so uh, yeah, so we are adding, uh, which is the next release of Vertica basically, we're adding support for loading Parquet complex data types to the VMAP format. So Parquet is a strongly typed uh, file format. Basically it has the uh, schema, it also has the type information for each of the complex type. However, uh, if you're exploring your data, uh, then you might have different parquet files with different schemes. So you can load them to the VMAP format first, and then you can analyze your data, uh, and then you can switch to the strongly typed complex types. Uh, we're also adding uh, one-dimensional optimized arrays and sets in ROS and for parquet. Um, so yeah, the, the complex types are not just limited to parquet, you can also uh, store them in ROS. Uh, however, uh, right now, we only support one-dimensional arrays and sets in ROS. Uh, we're also adding the Explode UDX for one-dimensional arrays uh, in, the, in this release. So you can, uh, as you saw in the previous example, you can explode uh, the data uh, for of array, in, in arrays, and you can apply predicates on individual elements for the arrays uh, data types. So you can, it will apply for sets, too. You can cast them trivially to arrays, and you can explode sets as well. Uh, so what are the plans past the Teno release? So we are going to continue support for strongly typed complex data types. Uh, right now, we don't have support for the full, uh, in the Teno release, we won't have support for the full, uh, all the combinations of complex types. So we only have support for nested uh, arrays, uh, sorry, nest, uh, nested uh, pure arrays or nested pure rows, uh, and some are only limited to parquet file format. So we will continue to add more support for subqueries and nested complex types in the following uh, in the in the following releases. And uh, we're also planning to add this uh, VMAP data type. So you saw in the examples that the VMAP data format is currently backed by the long bar binary uh, data format or the, or the column type. Uh, because of this, uh, the optimizer really cannot distinguish which is a, which is a, uh, which data is actually uh, a long bar binary or which is actually data in VMAP format. So, if we the idea is to basically add 
a type called vmap and then the optimizer can now uh, implement or support uh, op- optimizations or even uh, uh, syntax such as dot notation and yeah yeah if your data is columnar uh, such as parquet then you can implement optimizations such as key push down where you can push the keys that are actually uh, querying in your uh, in your uh, in your analysis and then only those keys should be loaded from parquet and built into the vmap format so that way you get sort of the columnar selection optimization for complex types as well uh, and uh, yeah that's something you can achieve if you have a different type for the vmap format so that's something on the roadmap as well and then unless join is basically another nice to have feature right now if you want to explode and join the array elements you have to explode in the sub query and then in the outer query you have to join um, the data however if you have this unless join it will allow you to explode as well as join the data in the same query and on the fly you can uh, do both and finally uh, we are also adding support for this uh, new feature called uh, UDE vector. So that's on the plan too. So our, all our work for complex types is, is essentially changing the fundamental way Vertica uh, uh, executes in the sense of uh, functions and expressions. So right now, all expressions in Vertica can return only a single uh, column out, uh, except in, in some cases like UDE transforms and so on. But uh, the scalar functions, for instance, if you take a UDE scalar, you can get only one column out of it. Uh, however, uh, if you have some use cases where you want to compute uh, multiple uh, computations, so if you want to have multiple computations on the same input data, say you you have uh, input uh, data of two integers and you want to compute both addition and uh, multiplication on those two uh, columns. So this is for example, but uh, in many, many machine learning uh, exa- use cases, you have similar patterns. So say you want to do both these computations uh, on the data at the same time, then uh, in the current uh, approach, you have to have one function for addition, one function for multiplication, and both of them will have to load the data once, basically you're loading the data twice to get both these computations done. However, with the UD vector support, you can perform both these computations in the same function, and you can return two columns out. Um, so essentially saving you uh, the loading, loading these columns twice. Uh, you can only load it once and get both the uh, results out. So uh, that's sort of what we are planning to implement with all the changes that we're doing to support complex data types in Vertica. And also, you don't have to uh, use this over clause like a UD transform. So UD scale, just like UD scalers, you can have a UD vector, and you can have multiple uh, columns returned from your computations. Uh, so that sort of concludes my uh, talk. So thank you for listening to my presentation. Now we are ready for Q&A.